Welcome to Kawaii Stories for Gigi Kids. A place where kids like us will be inspired by awesome Christian stories. Oh, look how cute! Oh, I like them all. I don't know which one I want to hold. Oh, I want that one. It's got a caramel color. Oh, and I like that white one. It looks like a little cotton ball. How cute! Hi, boys and girls, it's Poppy here, and I'm with Esther, and we're on Auntie Nina's farm. Auntie Nina, say hello to the boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls, how are you? Poppy and Esther are they here with me in the farm, and they're looking at the bunnies. They look beautiful, and we have a different colors. You know, bunnies remind me of Easter. <gasps> and Easter eggs. And chocolates. Oh, that's what Easter's about. Girls, girls, Easter is not about chocolate. It's about Jesus. We have to remember that. Oh, oh that's true. I always forget. Esther, don't you have a story about it? <gasps> I do. It's called The Real Easter Story. <gasps> Auntie Nina, do you want to listen to it? I would love to. Okay. Oh, wait, Esther. In my glitter box today, I've got something special. It is a special rock painting craft and there's a video for you. So make sure you follow the link below. It's all in my glitter box. That's all from me. Bye. And today we have a shout out. <gasps> oh, I love shout outs. Me too. We want to say hello to Juliana and Ezra. The parents and them are missionaries in Romania. <gasps> oh, wow. Romania is so far away. They love to share God's love with others. Oh, that is so special. Hello, Juliana. Hello, Ezra. You guys are doing such a great job. And hello to your parents too. And another thing, Ezra is turning for this <gasps> month. Happy birthday, Ezra! Oh, we hope you have an amazing birthday and you enjoy every single minute of it. So thank you so much for writing to us. You guys are amazing. And may God bless you as you do this amazing job. Awesome! Thanks, guys! Bye! Okay, now let's get into the story. Today's story is going to be a little bit long and it's written by my friend Ashley Price. The Real Easter Story, written by Ashley Price. Look, mother, is that Jesus? A little boy called Nathan cried in horror. His mother rushed to his side and, looking to where he pointed, she saw Jesus walking along a path, carrying a rugged cross, surrounded by a big group of people. Mother gasped. She grabbed Nathan's hand and together they ran to see the sight. It was Friday afternoon and many people had gathered outside the city of Jerusalem to see the crucifixion. Nathan and his mother stopped behind a group of weeping women and watched the scene with grief. Nathan saw Jesus fall to the ground under the weight of the heavy cross and then he turned to see the Roman guards grab a man from out the crowd and order him to carry Jesus' cross for him. Jesus stumbled along behind the man who carried his cross and Nathan could see the deep red marks on Jesus' back from where he had been whipped. He saw the crown of thorns that dug into his head, which caused blood to flow down his face, and he had bruises all over his arms and legs. What on earth had happened to Jesus? Nathan wondered in shock. Who would do this to him? Nathan turned to see his mother, asking the group of women what had happened to Jesus. And he heard them say that the Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus because they were jealous of the attention he was getting from the people. The women explained that Jesus had been awake all night in court with the religious leaders. Apparently the Pharisees had stirred up a mob of people to try and get Pilate to crucify Jesus, even though Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent. And so Jesus was sentenced to death by crucifixion, One of the women finished, letting out a sob and drying her tears with the sleeve of her dress. He was whipped, beaten and spat on by the Roman guards, said another woman. He was treated so cruelly that you would have thought he was a terrible murderer. The saddest thing is that he has never done any wrong in his entire life. A woman with long brown hair cried, 
He truly was the Messiah, the Son of God. Nathan tried not to cry as he thought back to how Jesus had healed his mother from leprosy just one year ago. Jesus had done so much to help him, yet there was no way he could help Jesus. Nathan and his mother made their way further up the path to be closer to Jesus. The group of cruel Roman soldiers leading Jesus and two other criminals with their crosses kept walking down the path until they reached the entrance gate to Jerusalem. They passed through the gate then stopped just outside the city walls. The man who was carrying Jesus' cross groaned and set his heavy load on the dry ground, and the soldiers sent him away. Then made Jesus lay down on the cross so that his arms were stretched out on the wooden beams. One of the soldiers reached for a hammer and used it to pound a nail into Jesus' hand. Nathan let out a cry as he turned his face away from the sight. He couldn't bear it to see his beloved Jesus get hurt so badly. Mother, why are they doing this to Jesus? Why does he have to die? He sobbed. Mother also turned her face away from the horrible sight. Tears ran freely down her cheeks and she wept. Nathan, we have all sinned and need forgiveness. So Jesus, the Son of God, came down from heaven to live here on earth to show us how to live holy lives. She sniffed. We all deserve to die because of our sins. But so that we do not have to die, the priest kills a lamb during the Passover celebration. You remember when John the Baptist called Jesus a lamb of God? Nathan nodded. Well, Mother continued, Jesus must die because he is taking our place. Just as the lamb took our place on the altar, Jesus is taking the punishment of our sins. Nathan put his hands on his face and cried. I'm so sorry that my sins have made Jesus die on this horrible cross, he sobbed. Me too said mother sadly, but we can see how much he loves us, that he is even willing to die for us. I love you too, Jesus, Nathan whispered through his tears, looking at his friend lying on the cruel cross. As a soldier drove a nail into his other hand, Jesus let out a painful moan, but he didn't get angry with a soldier. Nathan could hardly believe that Jesus still looked peaceful, despite what was happening to him. Then the most amazing thing happened. Nathan heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Jesus was praying for the very people who were hurting him. The soldier began to hammer a nail into Jesus' feet, and then the hands and feet of the other criminals on the crosses. But the other criminals were cursing and swearing at the soldiers. They weren't calm like Jesus was. Nathan saw the soldiers raise the crosses and put them in the holes in the ground so they stood upright. Then the soldiers stepped back and laughed at the suffering men. Nathan wished they would stop insulting Jesus. The priests and the Pharisees also began mocking, but they specially laughed at Jesus. If you are the son of God, come down from that cross, they jeered. The two criminals on the other side of Jesus did the same thing. They said, if you were the Son of God, you would save yourself and us. But Jesus didn't answer their mocking and their nasty words. Nathan looked at the blood running down his gentle face and his heart ached for poor Jesus. Most of Jesus' disciples seemed like they didn't want to be near him, which surprised Nathan. Only John, Jesus' mother and some other women stood there watching the awful events take place. Nathan saw Jesus' mother faint at the sight of her son being treated so horribly. Before long, Nathan heard the criminal on Jesus' right speak with a different tone. He wasn't mocking Jesus anymore. He was saying something, asking something. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He looked sorry for what he had been saying to Jesus. And Nathan heard Jesus' kind reply, Truly I say unto you today, you will be with me in paradise. Nathan once again was amazed at Jesus' forgiveness, and he noticed the look of joy on the face of the sorry criminal at hearing Jesus' words of comfort. Time passed slowly. Nathan carefully watched Jesus' face, and he saw pain and sadness in his eyes. Before long, Jesus looked out over the crowd and saw his mother standing with his faithful disciple John. Jesus said to his mother, Here is your son. And to John he said, Here is your mother. 
Nathan realized that Jesus' mother had no one to take care of her now that Jesus was going to die. So Jesus was telling his disciple John to look after her in his place. Suddenly, the sky grew black, so black that it felt like it was midnight. Nathan screamed and felt around in the darkness for his mother's hand. Once he found it, he held onto it tightly. When the time reached three o'clock in the afternoon, the darkness faded away. But there was still darkness around the cross where Jesus hung in pain. Nathan blinked. The sun seemed so bright after being in complete darkness for such a long time. Nathan then heard Jesus cry out in agony, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The priests and religious leaders mocked Jesus once again, and Nathan saw evil written all over the faces as they insulted the Son of God. Then Jesus' voice cried loudly, It is finished. Father, on your hands I commend my spirit. Nathan saw a light suddenly surround the cross, and he saw Jesus' beaten and bruised body hanging from the nails. Nathan looked up at his friend on the cross and saw his face shine like the sun. Then Jesus bowed his head on his chest, and Nathan knew that he had died. Nathan burst into tears. No! He put his face in his hands. He could not bear to look at his dear friend's lifeless body on the cross. Mother knelt beside Nathan and put her arm around his shoulders. There was a loud reaping noise, and Nathan lifted his head just as a gigantic veil in the temple tore in half, from the top to the bottom. Everyone gasped. Then the earth began to tremble and shake, and Nathan's heart pounded with fear as he saw rocks around the hill of Calvary break into pieces with great shattering sound. Nathan heard someone behind him make a shuffling noise on the ground. Nathan turned to see who was behind him. It was a Roman guard who was looking up at Jesus on the cross. He did not look like he hated Jesus, like the other soldiers did. Instead, he was looking at Jesus in amazement. With conviction in his voice, he said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Nathan looked up at his mother with wide eyes. He was surprised that a Roman guard would say such a thing. Nathan then turned to look at the disciples, who were weeping. Once they had received permission from Pilate, they went over and carefully took Jesus' body off the cross. They neatly folded Jesus' hands on his chest, then they gathered some white cloth to wrap his body in. Nathan sobbed as he watched the men gently carry Jesus' still form to a tomb, where they laid him to rest. He also saw Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene, another woman who had been at the cross, to see Jesus. They were weeping and praying together. It was Friday afternoon and everybody was beginning to prepare for the Sabbath. Nathan's mother gently touched his shoulder. Son, we need to leave so we can prepare tonight's meal before sundown. Nathan didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay near Jesus, but he agreed so that he could honor God's Sabbath day. At home that evening, Nathan and mother sat and ate their dinner in silence. They were both thinking about all that had happened that day. As Nathan went to sleep that night, he cried in his pillow, sad that he would never see Jesus again. I wish Jesus was alive, so that I could go and sit on his lap and bring him flowers like I used to, Nathan thought. I want him to put his hand on my head and ask God to bless me. I want to see his smile at me and tell me stories about his kingdom like he always did. How I wish he was still here. Nathan finally drifted off to sleep, feeling very sad and lonely. The next day, he and his mother went to the temple for the Passover service. Nathan saw the high priest put the lamb on the altar like he always did. But something was not quite right. All day he wished that Jesus was there, so that he could spend time with him and ask him questions like he always did. Sunday morning came just like any other day. Nathan got out of bed, knelt down to say his prayers, then went to eat his breakfast. Then he went to help mother with the house chores. Lunchtime came, and as the two of them sat at the table, ready to eat the food, mother spoke. Nathan, this afternoon I need to go and help prepare some food for the disciples' dinner tonight in the upper room in Jerusalem. You can come if you like. Maybe one of the disciples can tell you a story about Jesus' kingdom. I will come, Nathan agreed. So they finished the meal, 
and then they got up and made their way to Jerusalem. When they reached the house the disciples were going to eat in, Nathan followed his mother up the long flight of stairs to the top floor. When they entered the room, they met other women who were rushing around in the kitchen, beginning to make the food for the evening meal. Mother went to join them, and Nathan walked across the room to sit next to the window, where he gazed out at the setting sun, feeling sorry for himself. He was so sad that he thought his heart might break. He wondered if he would ever be happy again since Jesus had died. The disciples soon began to fill the room and Nathan watched as they each took their place on the floor and the benches. They all looked sad and tired. When everyone had arrived, the last person closed the door and made sure it was locked. Soon, mother and some of the other women brought the food out on round dishes and set them on the low table in the middle of the room. Nathan spotted a tall stack of bread rolls, some fish and some honeycomb pieces. Nathan liked the look of the food, but he knew he couldn't eat any of it until all disciples had eaten. Suddenly, a person appeared out of nowhere and stood in the middle of the room. The doors had been locked and the windows were too tied up for anyone to climb through. Nathan blinked. Was that who he thought he was? No. I must be dreaming, he thought. He rubbed his eyes and then looked again. No, it can't be, Nathan told himself. But yet it was. Jesus was the person who appeared out of nowhere and who now stood in front of the stunned disciples. Peace be unto you, he said in a gentle voice, familiar voice. Nathan looked at the disciples, whose eyes were white with terror. Their faces were pale white and they shrank back in their seats, too scared to be near Jesus. It's a ghost, they cried. Why are you afraid? Jesus smiled. Look at my hands and my feet. Touch the marks from the nails. A ghost does not have skin and bones like I do. He held out his hand to them and Nathan stared in amazement at the holes that the nails made. He looked down at Jesus' feet and sure enough, there were nails there too. Slowly, one by one, the disciples got up from the ground and gently ran their fingers on the spot where the nails had once held Jesus to the cross. Nathan sat thumped with joy. Jesus is alive, he told himself happily over and over again. He couldn't wait to give Jesus the hug he had wanted to give him for so long. After Jesus and the disciples had finished the meal, the disciples chatted excitedly among themselves, and Jesus looked around the room, as if he was searching for someone. Nathan watched Jesus closely, earnestly hoping that Jesus would see him. When Jesus saw Nathan, he smiled, and Nathan realized that Jesus had been looking for him. He could no longer contain his excitement, and he ran to Jesus and threw himself into his open arms. He hugged Jesus tightly. Jesus, Nathan whispered, it's really you. Yes, Nathan, Jesus replied kindly, it's really me. And Nathan closed his eyes and smiled as he leaned his head on Jesus. He decided that there was no one in the world that he loved more than the one who had died for him. Oh, that story was wonderful. I just love it and I definitely won't forget that Easter is all about Jesus. What a beautiful story, girls. Of course, I always will remember that Jesus died for us and he still loves us very much every day. Okay, boys and girls, that's all from us. Till next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. And don't forget, girls, you are Gigi, gorgeous in God's image. And boys, you are also Gigi, great in God's image.